So <laughs> how do I manage with spending little or no money to get every fusion? I'm going to break that down for you today because it's pretty important and hopefully helpful. So let's go. What's up guys, MTG Jedi here, and I have been working really hard on my dragon team. I'm very excited about this. Uh, HP and accuracy, yeah, that could be alright. I finally upgraded Royal Guard, and uh, I upgraded Ugo. Um, I have masteries on both of those, so we actually have like a real legitimate team, and like a good time. We actually got our best time there, which is super sweet. Um... I upgraded a bunch of their gear today, so one of my tips is maybe going to seem a little counterproductive, but, um, so I have, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, I just like brain farted there for a second. I have seven tips for you today, and most of them involve the word saving, okay? Okay. Like, I mean, I guess a lot of what I'm going to tell you today, it may you may have heard it before. But when you put it all together, it's not just one thing, it's all the things. When you put it all together, it equals fusions, okay? So, the first thing is farming for gear, which uh, does a bunch of things for you, okay? Now, you wouldn't think that farming for gear helps prepare for the fusions, okay? But farming for gear is one of the ways that you can accumulate silver, right? So I did some dragon runs today uh, for the Clanverse Clan. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to sell a bunch of the stupid crap. That one could be all right. And then I'm going to keep only the good pieces. And most of the time this, you know, you're selling the majority of things that you get, right? But um, in this case, we actually found a couple decent pieces. So we're going to sell that, which is great, because I'm super low on silver from fixing that team today. Um, but what you're really doing by running dungeons is you're using your resources, namely your energy, on a daily basis, okay? Okay. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you the resources that you need when it comes time for the fusion, okay? So yes, do we need to save things? Yes. But doing your daily activities gets you a lot of rewards, right? Like all of these things that we do and all of these things that we do, and then you're going to have more resources with which to complete the fusions, right? You're going to have these chickens. You're going to have faction war keys. You're going to have gems, okay? So, um, doing dungeons slash using your daily energy helps you to prepare for the fusion. And oftentimes what I see is that players who don't get the fusions... They just don't play that much, you know? They are more casual players, or they were really crunched for time and did not have a lot of time to do things, okay? Either of those is fine. There's no judgment there. But if you want to do fusions, then you you have to be pretty active to actually complete them, okay? Um, so uh, tip number two, which honestly might be the most important one is going to be potions okay now i don't know if you know this but you can click here this is like one of my little tips that i use all the time any of these that you want to you can click um so do i want to do that yeah i do uh just for the video though because we're supposed to be saving so let's go ahead and take a look at this team here. I thought I saved enough energy there just for that, but I was too short. Uh, we could have done level 14 if we wanted to, but it's way more efficient to do 20. So potions are oftentimes the limiting factor for fusions. Like 
the traditional fusions, all right? This upcoming fusion with Vlad the Nightborn is a fragment fusion, which means you don't need the potions, but when you have extra energy and you don't know what to do, check your potion count, right? Like, I like to stay, ideally, at, like, 10 to 20 of the the largest potions, and then as many as the uh, of the lower two as possible. You know, you'll get the lower two from going for the biggest one, right? The uh, superior, I think it's called, superior potions. Those are obviously the hardest ones to get. And you want to avoid using silver, unless, you know, a mission or a task makes you. Avoid using silver to, um, you know, like, make those superior potions. Because it's expensive, and then you get rid of those other resources. So you're losing out in two different ways. So just spend some energy and farm your potions. And that way, whenever you rank up a champion, you have potions available. Don't wait until you need the potions to go farm them, because oftentimes then the particular keep you want won't be open, okay? I just used all of my magic, like the blue ones, so when the potion keep opens tonight, I'm going to put some bunch of energy in there, and that will uh, help me stock back up. Also, I need to use some of it right away, probably. Um, because I had uh, a couple different blue, uh, you know, magic champions that I was working on. All right, so the potions are like the most important thing for the traditional fusions, in my opinion, right? But also when you're farming those, you do get some, um, you do get some silver and you can also rank champions up in this process as well. You know, like Ugo, I never finished leveling her. I leveled her in dungeons. Uh, I think I got her to like level 50. And then from 50 to 60, uh, I got her to level 50 with her masteries. And then from 50 to 60 in dungeons, right? So here's my potions. You can even click here to show you your current amount. I only have nine. I'm pre getting pretty low, so I do need to run these um, as well. Okay, so tip number three. Okay, there's, there's number two. I kind of have these out of order. The hardest thing early game is going to be silver, okay? But we have to do our best to save the silver, right? Now, there is currently an artifact enhancement event going on. After this one, then I will be saving my resources, okay? I will pr definitely get this rare book. That will be helpful. And then, you know, if I end up doing any of this, that's fine, but... You know, if you're free to play or low spend, you shouldn't be trying to max out every artifact enhancement event. You'll just, it will not go well, all right? Um, so you have to save silver. One of the ways that you can save silver is through the forge, okay? Um, I just went through and I crafted hundreds of pieces this morning. Um, I used up almost all of my fatal set, which is the set that I farm the magma dragon. Um, and I just came in here and I crafted this and then I sold all of these pieces. It took like a half an hour. It was super annoying. But at the end of the crafting session, I had 5 million silver and then that let me help my dungeon team. So, um, you have to prioritize your silver, but obviously I know that that's hard. Um, if you're farming spider, then, um then you can obviously, you know, get a lot of silver in the spider dungeon. Uh, so prioritizing your spider team is very important. Let's just make sure that my spider team is working, and then I can show you that as well in this process. Like, having faster teams for these dungeons just helps you do more and more efficiently. Um, so the way that this spider team works is everyone will progressively die, um, Renegade will reset the skills, we'll get the cooldowns on different champions here so that we can, um, reset the HP burn and the turn meter depletion. We have accuracy on Maneater as well as the unkillable to allow this comp to work. And then here he will set the unkillable again. And then she will 
proceed to throw her other nuke in there and we have about a one minute spider team okay and then if i run this a ton then i can sell all the bad gear uh 52 seconds this one's actually not bad hp percent and speed on an accuracy banner for ogren tribes and I actually have you know a bunch of ogren uh going right now so uh, that's a keep, but a lot of these like five star blues are, are sells and you know, you're going to get bad gear and then you're going to sell it, right? Plus you're going to get the, the silver from farming it anyway, but spider's dens, uh, stage 20 is the most efficient, uh, way to get silver in the game, in my opinion. Okay. So, um, the next thing that you want to do is you want to prepare your food. Okay, every fusion is going to have champion training tournaments and events. Okay, and so you need to have these champions ranked up already. I have a bunch of 20s, I have a bunch of 30s, and I have some 40s. Okay, I don't know what all of these, I mean, I have this one is particularly food. Um, I have one five star chicken ready to go and uh you know i i have a bunch of champions that i need to rank up um <laughs> i don't know who i'm gonna do next there are a lot of good options but i've been really thinking about it so <laughs> um probably not a wrong decision there but yeah getting your food ready ahead of time just when you have like every day when you run your dailies you know you have to complete seven campaign battles run food instead of running something else like instead of leveling up random champions um like this um i needed like one extra run so i stuck those in but most of the time in here i am not running random champions i am running food with this you know when i have to do my seven campaign battles per day or beat a campaign boss three times a day I come in here, I throw my food in, and I rank it up. So um, doing that ahead of time really helps you save resources for the next champion training event. Okay. Now, depending on how much time I have, I might use all this food and then make more before the fusion starts because um, I'm pretty far advanced on the track. And so... That's, you know, a good way to get resources is when you go in for events, um, make sure that you do what you can do, right? I'm all the way up here almost to this next reward, and then I get these awesome rewards for completing those. So, you know, I will have to do close to close to double where I'm at right now. So I don't know if I'm going to get that legendary book, but whatever I can get is great. And, um, you know, doing that during clan vs. clan gets a lot of points. So, uh, where am I at? 58,000 points right now. I used a couple Lego books, a couple um, epic books. I cleaned out the forge and I ran dragon a little bit. Okay, so I didn't do anything crazy. Uh, but I did upgrade the Great Hall. I got my second level 5. Okay, so saving all your things um, is, is very helpful for Clan vs. Clan, but also for the fusions. Alright, so that is your food option. Okay, so the next, uh, the next one is saving your shards. Like, for Clan vs. Clan, we have this stupid... Every time, the midweek shard event is the worst because there is no tournament or event going on. There is no boosted rate. It's just if you get a legendary, then you have a slightly higher chance of getting one of these three. If you're super end game, this is for you. Everyone else, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't be tempted. Like, you're not going to get it. Some guy you know, or some guy in your Discord, or, you know, one guy, he's going to get it off of three shards. You know that that's going to happen, but it's not going to be you. It's not going to be me, so skip it, okay? Now, every single one of these, every single one of these are free-to-play shards. I have not purchased any of these. These are all from Clan Boss. I get ancient shards every day from Clan Boss, guys. So make sure that you're hitting Clan Boss Every day, work on your clan boss team. Get to Ultra Nightmare. That's how you get these shards. Every single one of these from clan boss 
or progression rewards, okay? I'm stuck on the missions, but some of them were from previous missions. I have one last challenge to do, actually, and then I have all of my challenges complete. Um, so make sure that you're saving your shards. If you're free to play or low spend, you should probably just wait to pull your shards for fusion events, okay? For fusion events. So uh, the next thing that you can do to help yourself with fusion uh, shards is actually prepping these guys over here. Like if you want to make an extra copy of Relic Keeper, which I don't have the champions for because I just fused him, you can prep that. I have these ready to go to fuse Broadmaw. So I plan on doing that for the event or tournament that gives me points for for getting champions okay not the one for pulling shards you also get for pulling shards but uh some of those give you points for just getting the champions and then you can use your fusion and your previous fragment summons which i've been saving demitha just for that purpose okay like, I don't have time to level her up. I don't know what I'm going to do with her yet. I just know that I want her, right? So I'm just leaving her there, right? So those things are going to add to your shards. So that is very helpful. You could also pull those during Clan vs. Clan if you need the points. That is helpful as well. Um, the last thing that I want to say is that you need to save your gems. I know that it's tempting, okay, let's get this, to come in here and buy these shard packs. I know it is. Just don't ever, don't ever buy arena refills if you're free to play or low spend. Don't do it, okay? You just, you need those gems for other things. Buying an XP boost, I don't know. I haven't had to buy one yet. I keep getting them from different things in the game. So, I mean, I have... Four weeks and five days still. I've played the whole time on my account with these XP boosts from different things. So where am I supposed to be at? So um, you just, you can't come in here and spend gems all the time and expect to have gems for energy when it comes time for a fusion. You need to have some gems saved up for energy for the fusions and then worst case scenario you can always buy shards during the fusion if you're short on one of the summoning events okay i've literally never bought this obviously you shouldn't need this i very rarely have ever bought a clan boss key i have literally never bought a classic arena refill on my old account i would buy the tag arena refills but that shouldn't be until you're late game and you have good teams you're probably in silver or gold to make use of these, okay? Or it's for the, the tag tournament or something, right? The majority of these gems should be for energy, right? Use your gems for energy to run masteries. Don't buy the masteries. You're going to save 150 to 200 gems every time for masteries, and that adds up, right? That adds up, especially when you're low spender free to play. So... That, uh, one more thing on the gems. I still see players without the gem mine unlocked. Unlock your jack gem mine and max it out. You will get gems every day. One every hour and 36 minutes. Why? I don't know. Um, but basically you'll get, um, 15 gems every day. 15 gems every day just for having maxed that out. It's an investment that takes a couple months to pay off, but that's how you save gems as well, right? You're gonna get gems from all your quests, from doing all your stuff in game, but you're also gonna get gems from your gem mine. Do it, okay? Lastly, I highly suggest um, opening up all your slots, not maxing it out. I did a video on this on my strategy here, so Take a, take a watch to that video um, if this interests you, but this is another way to prepare your food for your account and for the champion training that you need to do for fusions, okay? Last but not least, 
If you want to do fusions, you just have to be an active player, okay? You have to be an active player. So I hope that this was helpful to you. Please let me know in the comments below what are your tips and tricks for fusions. And I hope that you will be ready to go for this fusion. I think that he is going to be an outstanding champion. I know that a lot of people have been super down on him. But I think he has a super cool kit. Um, whenever he's released in the game is when I usually wait to go over him. Like, we need more information for me to give you my full opinion. Right now, it's just speculation. So I usually wait on that. But Vlad the Nightborn, he's a Void Legendary, guys. You're not probably going to ever get him unless you do this fusion. I think he'll be amazing for the Undead Hordes faction. They need damage dealers, and he's a good one. And I also think his kit is very interesting. I'm very interested to test it out. And I'm going to get him on my account here. This low spend, early game account, I'm level 56, 2.0. So, hope you have a wonderful day. I hope this video uh, was helpful. And I will see you guys later today with my next video in the Faction Wars series. So, stick around. I'll see you later.